year after year and administration after administration. I mean, some of the ways the U.S. treats these foreign powers seems illogical according to their behavior. I believe it's because we are being blackmailed. That's all the more reason for the truth to come out. Interesting. And I think it's interesting uh, that there's nobody on the phone lines. Bart, I think you did a great job. What well, When you find the... Uh, I always find things like this quite interesting, but maybe in the audience out there doesn't. But I... How has it been received? Have you had any threats yourself, or do people just kind of, ah, so what, and go on, or what? Well, you probably experienced this with religious belief. I mean, there's some time you're trying to help people see that they have a false belief, whether it be about baptism or conversion or the Holy Spirit or, you know, what belief really means or faith in deeds or whatever, and they will not give up their point of view. They are not open to being wrong. You know, I realized today that uh, if I were writing a dictionary, right, and I was writing the definition of humility, I would write this. Humility is uh, the ability to be wrong. That's what it is. And something like this really gets people's emotions going. And uh, while uh, we have shown the film, you know, and the film has been seen by you know tens of thousands of people, four to five people who see the film reverse their opinion. I mean, they watched the film previously thinking the moon landings are real, and four to five people who watch our 45-minute film reverse their opinion. I believe largely because of this footage we uncovered of them faking part of the moon mission right in front of you, dated two days after they left. I mean, it jumps from being a theory into a fact. Now, there are some people, scientists I talked to, who said even if they saw Neil Armstrong confess on national TV that he did not go to the moon, they would still believe it. So I don't know what to say. I mean, it really pushes people buttons, especially in America. From what I understand, in China, it's taught in the university that the moon landings were fake. In the Soviet Union, a few people that I've come into contact with say the only people who believe the moon landings are real are the Americans. You know, this is something, it's not like they lied about it, you know, 40 years ago. They lie about it every day. They do not acknowledge the truth. And you may recall that a year ago, uh, from the National Archives, every single original videotape from all the TV transmissions from every moon mission disappeared. What happened was is that Ron Howard was doing a, an IMAX film about the moon landings, and he wanted the you know most original versions of the TV pictures and wanted to transfer them to this high-resolution digital format. Well, sometime between his request, even though he believed we really went to the moon, and the time that these copies were going to be made, they lost them. Now, here's the thing. These tapes are two-inch reels of uh, basically data longitude videotapes, so they're really big, and there's hundreds of them, and the total weight of these tapes is probably one to two tons, and they're kept in the hermetically sealed National Archives building, where the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, and things like that are kept. And they're and lost. They, huh? they lost okay. one what? to two tons of material a year all, ago, all right of a before sudden, they were to be copied. <laughs> very know? interesting. Uh, point made. Yeah. i got four people online, so let me go ahead and get to them. This past Peters, you're on the air. Uh, I can understand. Oh, by the way, this was... Uh, Call is from Southeast Michigan. Okay, thank you. And uh, the question I have is, uh, it would be quite easy to, to, for the astronauts to uh, to have the lid on them as, as far as speaking the, the truth. But what about the other, uh, perhaps hundreds upon hundreds of, of workers uh, of uh, those that that were in the uh, uh, the room when they when they shot it off and when they when they took pictures of it and the different the different uh, uh, parts that they had in the, the launch. Okay, so we'll let him answer that. Thank you for calling. Yes, that's well, a great you. question. That's a great question, and that was my initial question. The fact is they launched a satellite called the Tetris satellite, which was to simulate transmissions coming from the moon so that they could rehearse the moon landings to all those ground crews. The fact is the thing was so departmentalized, one person did the glove, one person did the boot, one person did the door. They were on the rocket. They did go up. 
and they did achieve Earth orbit, which is no small accomplishment. And that way they could get real zero gravity footage of their peanut butter sandwich floating by or whatever. But once they went out of sight, the only proof that they were on the moon or wherever they were were these data transmissions coming from the Tetra satellite, which was basically a computer program based on clock time. So all the guys at the consoles in NASA were getting false information about the altitude of the spacecraft, the amount of fuel that was being consumed, of course, the TV pictures as well, all that were bounced off of the satellite to appear as though they were coming from the moon. So they did not know. The more and more I looked into this, the more I realized that fewer and fewer people actually knew what was going on and that it was easier to pull off than I first believed. Because of the compartmentalization. Well, yeah, and yeah. that all the guys at NASA, you know, all those consoles were just getting the exact same information. I have footage of the actual launch, a dolly shot past all these consoles. You know what the guys are doing? They're kicked back with their feet up watching television like the rest of us, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and they're getting false information simply from a computer program, you know, which sent okay. all the computers the same well, information. Let's go to another call. This is Pastor Peters. You're on the air? Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm from Oklahoma. Yes. And... Um, Thank didn't you. they leave a flag and other equipment up there? And, and if they did, why hadn't anybody been able to see it? That's a great That's question. Good. Thank uh, you for calling. We'll take it. Yeah. Uh, according to NASA, there is no Earth-based telescope that is powerful enough to see man-made objects if there are any on the moon. They also claim that NASA's Hubble telescope is too powerful to focus on the moon. Now, whether or not this is true, we don't know but there has never been any telescope picture. From what I understand, the Hubble telescope is capable of it, but that's controlled by NASA, and that there are uh, maybe one or two very new telescopes that are capable of it, and but they haven't done it. You know, there was even one uh, in an article about two years ago that claimed they were going to do it, and then you never heard anything else about them, <laughs> you know, because apparently someone told them not to do it or whatever, but it's never been done. Very good. Let's go to another line. This is Pastor Peters. You're on the air. Oh, if you can hear me, I apologize. Hang up. Call back. This is the one line that I still don't have fixed. So number is 307-745-5913. Only got one other line that's taken, so there's plenty of lines available. This one that you're on just isn't working. This is Pastor Peters. You're on the air. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, this is John from... Uh Chicago land. All right. You got, we got a real bad connection, so ask the question and then he'll answer. Okay, real quick, uh, just to change the subject a little bit, has he ever analyzed the 9-11 tape to see if they are uh, true or fake or if these planes were holograms or whatever they were? Well, let's not go on 9-11 tonight. We want to stay on the moon, okay? Sorry about that. Uh, it's, all, it's no problem. I'm not rebuking you. but uh, what, question, what, what, It is a good question. I'll go ahead and ask him. Thanks. Um, well, bad uh, connection yeah. there, go ahead. Sure, I can have a quick answer. All right. John, I'm, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I don't think everything's a conspiracy. The fact is they did not go to the moon. It simply is not, uh, you're not technologically able to reach the moon even today, much less with four decades older technology. Whether or not 9-11 is a conspiracy, I don't know. I it's, do it's, know not a, it's not a relevant question. And the reason well, I'm kind of holding back on that is because there are some out there. Now, that might have been a very honest call. Or it might be one of the snakes saying we're trying to get everything into a conspiracy theory. I'm not saying that 9-11 wasn't conspiracy, but I'm saying it has nothing to do with what we're talking about. And I want to stay on line in regards to the moon. So, yeah. um, I, the, the, you know, Rush Limbaugh it's talks about conspiracy kooks. It's like they've well, for so long been able to brush everything off as kooks when you question well, people it. People don't realize the word conspiracy is in the Old Testament. Well, it certainly and is. In the Book of Kings, where people would conspire, you know, to kill another king and to well, put their son on the throne. Oddly enough, their son may have nothing whatsoever to do about it. Didn't even know about it. Maybe Johnson didn't have anything to do to know with Kennedy being killed. But the fact is, they knew the type of man that Johnson was. And they knew what, that he thought tremendously differently than Kennedy. Yeah. So... You know, cons conspiring at high conspiracy is in the Old Testament for, for sure, and it yeah. seems to me like somebody conspired against somebody in the New Testament to get him killed. But there you uh, go. Uh, hold on, hold on. This is Pastor Peters, you're on the air. Hi, Pastor Peters. Hello. Where are you calling from? Uh, this is Mike from Grafton, uh, southeastern Wisconsin. Go ahead, Mike. 
Well, I don't have a super intelligent question here.